Good morning, Mr. Ito. My name is J.K. Salcedo, or known as Saucy. And today I will be presenting my chemistry POL for the 10th grade. Today I'll be talking about unit form gases. Now, in the unit, you learn about the gases or the different shapes of matter, like the solid, liquid, and gas. One thing that most people come to sort of when they talk about gases is that what are gases actually? Are they just like oxygen around us, how we breathe them in? Or like, are there laws to them? That's how there's laws of physics. And another thing is that is gases formed like solid and liquid? And how there are stuff in solid and liquid? Is there such thing inside the gas? So the sensor scale 1A, what I've learned is that inside gases, there's always going to be pressure, volume, and temperature. Inside the, pre the pressure, wait, so the volume, in order to calculate the volume, you have to have something into it. Like, this idea, if you don't have anything right inside this volume, then you can see size. This is that when there's temperature, there's different kinds of how you measure it. Is it hot or is it cold? Like Kelvin. Like the Kelvin. Another thing about the sun is that for gases, they also have molecules that bounce off walls, just like in other stuff, such as the solid in here. What is unique about them is that, so what unique and different, what's unique and different about them is that the volume tells you how much is something is inside, the temperature tells you how hot it is or how cold it is, and it also relates to the gas. The pressure. Another thing is that when so when the temperature is added with volume, there's going to be some kind of pressure, such as if a water bottle is carrying the gas and gets heated up, it will start to sort of get bigger and kind of erupt or explode. This pressure is too high for it. One question that usually that usually people have is that if you have a soda bottle with you and it's filled with a lot of liquid and you have it in a high mountain, but then when you go down, why is it that it's a bit closed inside? It's because there's not that the when you go down, there's not that much pressure around the, the air around when you're down. Instead of being up at somewhere that's cold, you are on something that's hot. So the pressure is a bit loose. Mm -hmm. For essential scale 1B, we learned that there has to be something. So if pressure goes up, volume is going to go down as temperature rises. And if temperature starts to go low, volume will be high and pressure will be low. What we learned for the gas laws. Another thing is that when, right here, how shown on the graph, it shows that at, it starts at the start, but when it gets bigger, the temperature will also rise. Or if it's not there, pressure will be up, volume will be low, vice versa. The central scale one C, there's we learn about standard temperature and standard pressure. Standard temperature is at exactly 273 kelvins. As for essential, as for standard pressure, it's going to be at 1 atm. That means that it's the beginning and starting point of it. As it rises, as temperature rises, it will get bigger to more than 273 kelvin and at. And the more atm will get bigger. But also, also there's a standard volume as well that it starts at 22.4 liters for one mole as long as it's also the standard temperature and okay. In the sensor scale 1D we learned that there are different types of how to measure the temperatures like there's the Celsius and the Kelvin scale so the question is like what's so different about them or why is it that Kelvin starts at 273 and Celsius starts at zero? Well it's because Celsius can go ne at the negative level, but for Kelvin, it goes down to zero, making it absolute zero, the coldest it can be, which is negative 273 degrees Celsius. As it gets higher, it goes above 273 Kelvin, and it's getting harder, above zero Celsius. And the last essential scale, this one we learn about the ideal gas law, like PUV equals RT. For the driving question, people wonder what is the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law is basically saying that 
when you have 1 atm, so this is using standard temperature and standard pressure, this 1 atm is what you start off with. But later, but depending on what the R is, it will also depend on how everything is. So if you have 1 liter, 1 atm, that's what you have. But if the atm is different, like if it's mg, is an H, <coughs> it's a different kind of pressure, it's going to use a different N. It's going to have a different result, such as the R. Like here, it's at 0 0.082821 liters ATM and 1 more N kelvins. But if the pressure were different, it would change absolutely, causing the temperature to rise or get lower, or the volume to rise or get lower. And today I'll be presenting my integrated math to POL. Well. At first, to start, to start off with my POL, well, you may ask, like, what if I've been doing for my homework? So, right here, as you can see, I did complete all my homework, but at the past, in the past, I didn't do so well. I did some, and then some I didn't do because when I didn't know, I sort of just gave up on it. And I didn't really know what to do. That's right here. This is my first unit. And then right there is my second unit. Here, I did fine on the homework, but for the quizzes, I didn't study enough. So which is why it didn't do so well. My corrections also showed that I turned them in late because I had problems. Even though I didn't do my homework, I didn't have time to answer my questions on the quiz. And why my corrections didn't go so high. As for unit two, I was able to understand everything because I actually did everything and pay attention in class making it the grade I was wanting to have. So my essential score chart was that I complete my corrections. Yes and no. The corrections I did right here, so right here is my first and that is my second. Right, the first corrections, I if I didn't really if I didn't know how to do well on a test and I didn't do my homework, that's when I didn't do my corrections. Or I tried, but I failed because I felt like I was stuck and I didn't really call, ask for anyone for my help. In Unit 2, however, I did end up doing my corrections because that's when I started asking for help from like, my friends or from teachers and other people that helped me, like my parents. Now, if I, like, what did I do for the semester to improve my grade on it to you at having an A? So what I did first was I had math honors I to your class, and I had some friends there that helped me. And every time I did math honors, it made me feel smart, and it actually helped me on my homework, making me feel better about myself. Another thing is that at times I would go to office hours, I believe it was like twice when I had a question on something. And also one time I had to turn in homework because I felt like I was going to be late for the math honors. So I turned it in. Other stuff that helped me was my parents would actually help me. They sit down and tell me how to solve it and how to help me. Like my mom told me how to, like for the angular postulates. My dad told me the exterior, the exterior angle and the irregular exterior angle. And what's the difference and what they look to. My technical skill, like it doesn't really show right here because apparently my English was pretty good somehow, but. What I was going to talk about if you were there is that one thing is that for my first essential skill, which was unit one, that I had the most trouble with. Because when looking at a line and when looking at parallel lines and the line that crossed right through it, I had trouble trying to figure out. At first I thought exterior angles was going to be inside, but since the word exterior means it was outside, which is what I had trouble with. After my parents helped me with that, they told me where it was located, so exterior angles would be outside, interior angles would be outside. Corresponding would be when it was going to be right here and over there, so outside and inside. And consecutive would be the right next to each other. And 
supplementary, which one, like, which one right here, but out of 180, then you win. I don't to that. One point that I, helped, that I got wrong on the quiz, I also got wrong on the test. This right here is a question from the quiz. I had to solve angle 13 right here. Figure out what it was. At first I didn't know what it was, but after looking at the graph for a while, I thought that maybe my given would be angle 3. But if I were to do that, I would have to go from here to here, and then right here and there. And I realized that is not it would not be right. After going through some speculation, angle 13 would actually have to be related to somewhere around right there, angle 2. These two are similar, so they aren't corresponding. And right here, be there. So at the end, I actually did get you right, but I didn't explain my steps of how that got done. <coughs> and I had, to see, I had a similar problem with it, like on the test. On the test, I had to figure out the statement. It looks blurry. I had to figure out what I got wrong and what I was right. And I noticed that the answer says 38, but it's actually 36. <laughs> After looking at the semester, I realized that right now I have a B plus. What I, the grade I think I deserve is pretty much the grade I have right now, because I didn't do so well in during like the first part of the semester. I gave up, which is why people keep telling me to push forward, to keep trying. Why I gave up was because I felt like I didn't know anything. But after having help from my friends and my family, that's when I realized I can just keep going and trying. What my current grade is, is of course a B plus. And it is accurate because, well, I did all I could, but there was also errors that I didn't go back and check my answers. Does it reflect my effort and knowledge? Any questions? Yeah. Or is that our computer? That's our computer, right? Yeah. Actually, you can leave it in. Like, uh, so it was X and L. Yeah. How do I stop this? Mm -hmm. How do I stop this? Oh, uh, that's a